Right, today's lesson will continue with the conversion of Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus. So let's look at this reaction. All right, say I now have a solution of iron 3 chloride. Okay, iron 3 chloride solution. Okay, so if I were to convert iron 3 chloride to iron 2 chloride, so what should I add to this iron 3 chloride solution? So what can I do is, now let's look at this reaction. If I have an Fe3+, plus and I want to convert it to Fe2+, plus, okay, I am actually experiencing a decrease in the oxidation number from 3 plus to 2 plus. Since there is a decrease in oxidation number, so this reaction is actually a reduction reaction. A reduction reaction. So, if iron 3 undergo a reduction reaction, so this one undergo reduction we can actually also say that, we can also actually say that iron 3 chloride itself is somehow an oxidizing agent. We have covered this at the beginning of chapter 3. So if something undergoes reduction, then itself is an oxidizing agent. So if I ask you what is to be added, what is to be added to iron 3 chloride, then obviously you will have to add a reducing agent okay so what are we going to learn today is a conversion of fe3 to fe2 and because this reaction is a reduction reaction so a reducing agent will be needed to convert iron3 to iron2 all right and to complete our ionic equation for fe3 to fe2 very simple this side is more positive so just add electron on the left hand side Alright, okay, so now we are going to look at the examples of oxidizing agent that we can use. Oh, sorry, the, ox the examples of reducing agent that we can use for uh, the conversion of Fe3 to Fe2. Okay, so uh, there are a lot of reducing agent, but actually the most important one, the most important one only have uh, two groups. Two groups, okay? What do I mean by two groups, okay? The first category is the reactive method. Reactive metal, right? Reactive metal. So when we talk about reactive metal, I always ask the student to memorize like this. Magnesium, aluminium, and zinc. Alright, you can memorize as mass, mass, okay? Magnesium, aluminium, zinc, alright? These three are examples of very good reducing agent. Another very good reducing agent, a very important one, is the halide. Okay, what is the halide? Halide means halogen in a form of compound. For example, potassium iodide, which is Ki. Okay, or you can also have potassium bromide solution, which is KBr. Okay, these two are very good reducing agent. And other than that, we also have sodium sulfide and sulfur dioxide. They also act as a reducing agent. All right, so now we are going to learn how to write the half equation, the half equation for each of this reducing agent. All right, okay, so now in the first, in the first example that I will be using is, okay, when... I want to convert Fe3 plus to Fe2 plus, okay, as usual, okay, I have Fe3 plus, huh? okay, so if the substance that I add in is a magnesium metal, then how do I write the half equation for magnesium metal? Very simple, metal, they are either atom or they're either positive ion. So at the beginning, if I have magnesium metal, that means I have Mg with no charge. So if at the beginning Mg have no charge, then after the reaction, it should have a charge. And the charge of Mg is 2 plus. Okay? And then how I put the electron on the right-hand side this time around because it's more positive. And because the difference of charge is 2, so 2 electrons. 
okay very simple very simple okay so for the iron 3 part fe3 plus plus e become fe2 for mg mg become mg2 so electron this side okay so for these two combined how do i write the ionic equation overall ionic equation okay we have done this in our previous previous lesson already so how are you go going to combine these two into one overall ionic equation okay so the key is i'm going to show the working the working is fe3 plus plus e comes fe2 plus then on the other hand i have mg comes mg2 plus plus 2e so i'm going to sum up both of my equation so how do i sum up the thing that i must do is look at your electron they are now different right they are now different so make it the same how i make it the same this whole equation times two so here two two and two now the number of electron is the same i can just cancel it off so what i have 2fe3 plus and then mg Okay, this is what I am left with at my left hand side. And then on the right hand side, I'm left with Fe2 plus Mg2 plus. Okay, so this is how we write the overall ion equation after we get the half equation for each of the reactant. Okay, All right. Now, other than magnesium, aluminium, and zinc, other than magnesium, aluminium, and zinc, we can also use halide. Halide is a really good uh, reducing agent, especially iodide, okay? So what happened is, okay, to convert Fe3 to Fe2+, plus, okay, I gain one electron. So if I use potassium iodide to carry out this one, so if I use potassium iodide as a reducing agent okay so i can basically ignore the potassium basically for this chapter if you actually happen to see potassium in a compound somehow you can just ignore potassium most of the time um it's not really functional it's a partner it's its partner that is a functional one so we'll give our focus on the iodide okay so what does iodide mean iodide means i am an i minus okay i minus so for halogen and halides if at the beginning is minus then uh, the ending means no charge okay no charge and then it's diatomic i2 so two electrons okay so i'm done for writing the ion equation for iodide all right okay now the last two, sodium sulfide and sulfur dioxide is a bit more complicated and you need to memorize something. You need to memorize something, all right? Okay, so as usual, I'm going to convert Fe3 to Fe2+. Plus. Okay, this is how I write my ion equation for ion 3. And then, okay, if this ion 3 react with sodium sulfide, by the way, sodium sulfide is Na. Sulfide is a SO3 2 minus ion. So sodium sulfide, the formula is Na2, SO3. Okay, so how do I write the half equation for sulfide? Eh? Okay, now ignore sodium again. Sodium, potassium, all can ignore. Okay, just ignore. Eh? So I'll just be taking my SO3, 2 minus. Now, so I mentioned you need to memorize something, right? What's the thing that you need to memorize? You need to memorize that SO3 will end up becoming an SO4 sulfate ion sulfate ion okay right from so3 to so4 so3 to so4 i try to balance the equation by balancing the quantity of sulfur one sulfur here and another sulfur here so sulfur is balanced oxygen three but on the other side oxygen is four so oxygen is not balanced that means this side on my left hand side i have to add one more oxygen right here i have to add one more oxygen and for redox you can't just simply add oxygen oxygen always come in the form of water all right it comes in the form of water so now i have 3o plus 1o so total 4 oxygen okay oxygen is balanced already oxygen is balanced and next sulfur settle oxygen settle but what is not balanced hydrogen right so on the other side I will balance it by writing two hydrogen ions. 
two hydrogen ion. Okay, so now my sulfur is balanced. Oxygen three plus one, total four. Then this side, four oxygen balanced. Two hydrogen on the left hand side and two hydrogen on the right hand side, all balanced. And lastly, don't forget when you write ion equation, electrons are very important. So now it's my, uh, it's my turn to balance my electrons. Now for this side, overall, water has no charge. But sulfide has a negative too. And this side, all right, sulfate has a negative two charge. And here, two plus. So overall, no charge. Now between negative two and zero, which one is more positive? Right hand side, right? So I'm going to put my electron on the right hand side. And I need two of it because the balance of charge is two. All right? Okay, so settle for sulfide. All right? Okay, so last one, how to write the half ionic equation for the reaction of sulfur dioxide with iron three. Okay, and as usual, my iron three gain electron become Fe2+. plus. Okay, so how do I write the half equation for sulfur dioxide? Sulfur dioxide means SO2. Okay, this is also something you need to memorize that SO2 somehow will also end up becoming a sulfate. SO4, 2 minus. Okay, so now I only have one thing that is not balanced, that is my oxygen. Okay, this side I need to top up to oxygen. But it can't be just oxygen. It must be in the form of water. And because of that, I also have to balance the hydrogen on this side, on the other side. So 2H2 end up becoming 4 hydrogen ion. Right? So now I check again. Sulfur 1. Here sulfur 1. Balance. O2 plus 2O. Total 4 oxygen. This side also 4 oxygen. It's balanced. And then uh, everything is balanced ready. Okay. Now my charge. This side, the reactant side, has got no charge at all because SO2, no charge. Water, no charge. So zero. Whereas this side, negative two plus four, which equals to positive two. So between zero and a positive two, which one is more positive? Right hand side, because it is a positive two, so I give two electrons here. Okay, so this is how I write the half ionic equation for each of the reducing agent. Okay, for different reducing agent. Okay, that I use to convert iron 3 to iron 2. Okay, so as usual, your homework today will be to practice writing the overall ion equation for the reaction 1, 2, and 3. Okay, the fourth one I've shown you already, so no need to do that. All right. Last but not least, all right. What are the observations for all this? Actually, quite simple. This is a reaction that converts your Fe three plus ion to Fe two plus ion. So what happened is, iron three is brown solution and iron two is a green solution. Okay, so you will see a color change from brown to green in all of the cases. All right. Okay. Okay. So I hope you are clear with today's lesson. And because we have already done the conversion of Fe2 to Fe3 and the other way around, so I think I want to recap a bit for uh, uh, the redox, okay? I want to recap a bit for uh, some part of the redox, okay? So now we know that Fe2 can be converted to Fe3+, okay? Fe2 can be converted to Fe3+, and because this reaction is an oxidation reaction, it means what? Fe2 needs to react with oxidizing agent. Okay? Alright? And what are the examples of oxidizing agent that we have covered yesterday or the previous lesson? Examples are acidified potassium manganate 7, acidified potassium dichromate 6 okay and also chlorine water or 
bromine water. These are examples of very strong oxidizing agent. Right. And for this lesson, we learn how to convert Fe3 to Fe2. And since this reaction is a reduction reaction, we want to make Fe3 undergo reduction. So Fe3 must react with a reducing agent. So can we recall what are the examples of reducing agent? Okay, simple. The metals, the reactive metal, which is MAZ, which means magnesium, aluminium, and zinc. All right, either one of them. Okay, and then I also have halides such as potassium iodide, potassium bromide. Okay, each time the halide work as the reducing agent. And last but not least, last but not least, I have the sulfur compounds that is sulfur dioxide, sulfur dioxide and sodium sulfide. All right, and sodium Sulfide. So these are examples of uh, oxidizing agent and reducing agent that you can copy it on a small note, that you can copy it on a small note and uh, it will be very useful when you answer um, SPM questions, okay? Because uh, yeah, it's going to be very useful. Okay, so that's all for today. Okay, so please memorize the examples of oxidizing and reducing agent because we will be using it in uh, other examples. Alright, thank you.